Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of NASCAR Underdogs, Mike Wallace. Mike Wallace is a former NASCAR driver who competed in the NASCAR Cup Series, Xfinity Series, and the Craftsman Truck Series from 1990 through 2020. He is part of the legendary Racing Wallace family. He is the middle brother of Kenny and Rusty Wallace. In 1990, he made his NASCAR Xfinity Series debut in Martinsville in the fall behind the wheel of a number 40 Lowe's Foods Chevrolet for Reno Enterprises, finishing a solid sixth. For the 1991 season, Mike Wallace made nine Xfinity Series starts for a few different teams. His best start was 10th at Charlotte in the spring, and his best finish was 3rd at Lanier in the spring, both coming while behind the wheel of the number 18 Daily Juices Pontiac for Highline Racing, Ted Condor's group. Overall, in nine starts, he scored one top five and two top tens. Wallace also made his NASCAR Cup Series debut behind the wheel of the number 52 alka Seltzer Pontiac for Jimmy Means Racing at Phoenix in the fall. He made two starts altogether. His best start was 36th at Atlanta in the fall, and his best finish was 31st at Phoenix in the fall. Mike Wallace looked to have a full-time ride in the Xfinity Series when the 1992 season began. Though after race 12, he and the number 20, Daly's first aid Oldsmobile, owned by Dick Moroso, team parted ways. His best start was 7th at Bristol in the spring, and his best finish was 10th at Martinsville in the spring. Starting at race 27 in Dover, Owen Racing's number 9 Oldsmobile team signed Wallace to replace Clifford Allison following his untimely death. In five starts to finish the 92 Xfinity Series season, his best start was 5th, and his best finish was 2nd, both coming at Martinsville in the fall. Overall, in 17 starts, he scored 1 top 5 and 3 top 10s, finishing 22nd in final Xfinity Series points. He also made 4 attempts in the Cup Series, for 2 different teams. He attempted 2 races in the number 20 Oldsmobile for Dick Moroso, D&Qing for the 1992 Daytona 500, then starting 35th and finishing 33rd in Atlanta in the spring. Then late in the season, he made two more Cup Series starts for his own racing team that he started driving full-time for in the Xfinity Series. Behind the wheel of the number 88, FDP Brakes Ford. His best start was 34th at Rockingham in the fall, and his best finish was 20th in Atlanta in the fall. Finally, in 1993, Mike Wallace was able to go Xfinity Series racing full-time for own racing's number 9 Oldsmobile. In the fall, Richmond... Wallace d would in his number 9, so he got in the number 64 for Shoemaker Racing, starting 32nd and finishing 33rd. Wallace's best start was 3rd at Hickory in the spring, and his best finish was 4th at Bristol in the summer. Overall, he scored 0 poles, 0 wins, 1 top 5, and 9 top 10s, finishing 12th in final Xfinity Series points. Up in the Cup Series, he attempted 5 races for 2 different teams. 4 attempts for Owen Racing's number 66 Pontiac, qualifying three times. His best start was 23rd, and his best finish was 15th, both coming in Atlanta in the fall. The other start was for Jimmy Means Racing's number 52 at Charlotte in the fall, starting 35th and finishing 30th. The 1994 NASCAR Cup Series season saw Mike Wallace make the jump up to the Cup Series full-time, starting at race four in Atlanta, behind the wheel of the number 90 Heilig Meyer Ford for Junior Dunleavy Racing. Freddie Fryer served as Wallace's crew chief for the 1994 Cup Series season. They attempted 28 races, d and six times. His best start was 13th at Charlotte in the fall, and his best finish was 5th at Atlanta in the fall. Overall, in 22 starts, he scored 1 top 5 and 1 top 10, finishing 33rd in final Cup Series point standings. In the Xfinity Series, Wallace remained with Owen Racing's number 9 Chevrolet team. Full-time. They d would for both Charlotte races. His best start was third in Atlanta in the spring. And his best finish was first three times at Dover in the spring, winning his first career Xfinity Series race, then Milwaukee and IRP in the summer. Overall, he scored zero poles, three wins, six top fives, and nine top tens, finishing 19th in final Xfinity Series point standings. In 1995, Wallace would return to the Dunleavy Racing number 90, Heilig Meyer Ford, again full-time. Owner Junie Dunleavy replaced Fryer as Wallace's crew chief for the 1995 season, starting at race 5 in Darlington. Again, they d would five times this season. His best start was 10th at Snowman in the spring. 
and his best finish was 8th at Bristol in the fall. Overall, in 26 starts, he scored one top 10 and finished 34th in Final Cup Series points. As far as the Xfinity Series, Wallace again remained with the Owen Racing Team. For the 1995 season, they switched their number to the number 90, matching his number in the Cup Series. The team didn't run the full schedule, but they ran most of it. His best start was second in Milwaukee in the summer, and his best finish was second twice at Dover in the spring and Rockingham in the fall. Overall, in 19 starts, he scored 0 poles, 0 wins, 4 top 5s, and 9 top 10s, finishing 20th in final Xfinity Series points. In 1995, NASCAR formed the Super Truck Series, now called the Crescent Truck Series. Wallace made his Truck Series debut at North Wilkesboro in the fall in a number 26 Ford from Mike Mittler, starting 25th and finishing 29th after blowing an engine on lap 104. After spending the previous two seasons driving for Dunleavy Racing's number 94 team, in 1996, Mike Wallace returned, attempting the first 12 races of the NASCAR Cup Series season. Bob Johnson served as Wallace's crew chief for the 96 Cup Series season. He qualified for 10 out of the 12 attempts in the Cup Series for the 90 team. His best start was 17th at Daytona in the spring, and his best finish was 17th at Rockingham in the spring. A little bit later in the season, at Michigan in the summertime, Wallace made one start in the number 19 help source forward for TriStar Motorsports, starting 41st and finishing 29th. In the Xfinity Series, Wallace returned to the Owen Racing number 90 Duron Paints Ford, making 20 attempts, qualifying 17 times. His best start was 3rd at Bristol in the fall, and his best finish was 4th at Richmond in the spring. Overall, in 17 starts, he scored two top fives and five top tens, finishing 26th in final Xfinity Series point standings. Wallace looked to have a full-time ride for the 1997 NASCAR Cup Series season behind the wheel of the number 91 Spam Chevrolet for Joe Falk. Though the team had a real issue qualifying for races, DNQing eight times in 15 attempts, before he and Falk parted ways following 15th race of the season in California. His best start was 17th twice, Darlington and Pocono in the spring, and his best finish was 17th at Texas in the spring. A few races later, Richard Jackson had Wallace attempt to qualify for the Brickyard 400 at Indianapolis in the summer. And the number one R&L Carriers Pontiac, though he DNQ'd. In the Xfinity Series, he made seven starts for Ed Whitaker's number seven Clabber Girl Chevrolet, with Tony Uri Sr. as his crew chief. His best start was 7th, and his best finish was 17th, both coming at Bristol in the spring. For the second half of the 1997 season, Wallace was picked up by Ken Schrader's Craftsman Truck Series team, the number 52 Pure Later Pure Line Filters Chevrolet. His best start was second at Colorado in the summer, and his best finish was second at California in the fall. Overall, in 15 Craftsman Truck Series starts, he scored zero poles, zero wins, one top five, and seven top tens, finishing 23rd in final Craftsman Truck Series point standings. For the 1998 NASCAR Cup Series season, Wallace only made one start in the Daytona 500 behind the wheel of a number 73 X1R Chevrolet owned by Phil Barkdahl, starting and finishing 23rd. Then in the Xfinity Series, he made six starts for three different teams. He made two starts for the Andy Petrie Racing number 15 Chevrolet team. His best start was 6th at Daytona in the spring, and his best finish was 9th at IRP in the summer. Then he made one start for Andretti Laird Racing's number 96 Pontiac at Bristol in the spring, starting 43rd and finishing 41st after a crash on lap 29. Wallace made the remaining three starts for the number 50 Dr. Pepper Ford team owned by Washington Irving Motorsports. His best start was 38th and his best finish was 20th, both coming at Charlotte in the fall. However, in the Craftsman Truck Series, he ran full-time behind the wheel of the number 52 Pure Later, Pure Line Filters Chevrolet, owned by Ken Schrader. All in all, Wallace had a pretty decent season for his first full-time season in the Craftsman Truck Series, spending 10 weeks throughout the season inside the top 10 in point standings. His best start was first at Loudoun in the summer, and his best finish was fourth at Bristol in the spring. Overall, he scored one pole, zero wins, three top fives, and 11 top tens, finishing 13th in final Craftsman Truck Series points. That following season, 1999, Mike Wallace was signed on to drive full-time in the Craftsman Truck Series for Ultra Motorsports in the number 2 Team ASE Racing Ford. 
His best start was second twice at Martinsville and Bristol in the spring, and his best finish was first twice at Homestead and Pikes Peak in the spring. Wallace had a very strong season, spending nine weeks inside the top five in point standings, and every week inside the top ten in point standings. Overall, scoring zero poles, two wins, 12 top fives, and 14 top tens, finishing sixth in final Crash and Truck Series point standings. In the Xfinity Series, he only made one start at Darlington in the fall, behind the wheel of the number 77 Lear Corporation UAW Ford for Tony Hall, starting 19th and finishing 41st, following a lap 22 crash. Then in the NASCAR Cup Series, he made two starts, one for Junie Dunleavy's number 90 Ford team in the Daytona 500, starting 42nd and finishing 23rd. Then at Richmond in the fall, Wallace made his other start behind the wheel of a number 32 Ford for his Craftsman Truck Series owner, Jim Smith. The turn of the century, the year 2000. For Mike Wallace, he returned to his Ultra Motorsports number 2 Ford ride in the Craftsman Truck Series full-time. His best start was first, twice, at Mesa Martin and Martinsville in the spring. And his best finish was first, also twice, at Daytona and Mesa Martin in the spring. This was a stronger season than the previous season for Wallace, leading the Craftsman Truck Series point standings for seven weeks throughout the season, spending every single week inside the top five in point standings. Overall, scoring two poles, two wins, 13 top fives, and 16 top tens, finishing fourth in final Crest of Trek Series point standings. As for the Xfinity Series, he made eight starts, all in that number 77 Lear Corporation UAW Ford for Tony Hall. His best start was 13th in Michigan in the fall, and his best finish was 14th at IRP in the summer. Wallace did not make any starts in the Cup Series in 2000, though for the 2001 NASCAR Cup Series season, Jim Smith would move Wallace up to the Ultra Motorsports NASCAR Cup Series number 7 Nation Rents Ford full-time. Until race 29 at Charlotte, when the opportunity to drive the number 12 Ford for Roger Penske opened up as his brother Rusty's teammate. His best start in the number 7 was 20th at Martinsville in the spring, and his best finish was 6th at Daytona in the spring. In the number 12 Mobile 1 Ford, his best start was 12th at Martinsville in the fall and his best finish was second at Phoenix in the fall. Overall, in 29 starts, he scored zero poles, zero wins, one top five, and six top tens, finishing 34th in final NASCAR Cup Series point standings. In the Xfinity Series, Wallace made eight starts behind the wheel of a number four Chevrolet for the Bajie Brothers Racing team. His best start was 17th at Homestead in the fall, and his best finish was 10th at Richmond in the fall. Wallace made zero Crest of Truck Series starts, in the 2001 season. In 2002, Wallace made 21 NASCAR Cup Series starts for three different teams. Four for Andy Petrie Racing's number 33 Chevrolet. His best start was 13th at Daytona in the summer, and his best finish was 21st at Daytona in the spring. Next, he made one start for MBV Motorsports in their number 10 Valvoline Pontiac at Chicagoland, starting 36th and finishing 38th after blowing his engine on lap 172. Then he made 16 starts in A.J. Foyt's number 14 Conseco Pontiac. His best start was 20th at Homestead in the fall, and his best finish was 10th at Bristol in the fall. Overall, in 21 starts, he scored one top 10 and finished 41st in final Cup Series point standings. In the Xfinity Series, Wallace made 17 starts behind the wheel of the Baji Brothers number 4 Chevrolet. His best start was 18th at Richmond in the fall, and his best finish was 14th twice at Daytona and Chicagoland in the summer. In the Craftsman Truck Series, he made four starts behind the wheel of the number 52 Federated Auto Parts Chevrolet owned by Ken Schrader. His best start was ninth, and his best finish was fourth, both coming at IRP in the summer. Overall, in four starts, he scored one top five and two top tens. Wallace ran full-time in the Xfinity Series in the number four Geico Chevrolet for the Baji Brothers Racing Team in 2003. Crew Chief for the team was Tony Lambert. His best start was 13th at Darlington in the fall, and his best finish was 4th at Daytona in the spring. The team wasn't that flashy, but Wallace was consistent, overall scoring 0 poles, 0 wins, 1 top 5 and 3 top 10s, finishing 13th in final Xfinity Series point standings. Up in the NASCAR Cup Series, making 16 attempts for two different teams. Attempting eight races behind the wheel of the number 09 Mikasuki Resorts Dodge for James Finch, qualifying for six races. His best start was 18th, and his best finish was 9th, both coming at Daytona in the spring. 
Overall, in six starts, Wallace scored zero wins, zero poles, zero top fives, and two top tens. At Richmond in the spring, during Cup Series practice, Jerry Nadeau had a horrific accident behind the wheel of the number 01 U.S. Army Pontiac, in which he suffered a concussion and a fractured skull, several broken ribs, a fractured shoulder blade, and a fractured sternum, a punctured and a collapsed lung. Nadu's impact was recorded at over 120 times the force of gravity. Well, in other words, 120 Gs. Spending three weeks in a coma, doctors only gave him a 6% chance of survival. Thankfully, he did survive, though he would never return to NASCAR. Mike Wallace was brought in by MB2 Motorsports to fill in for Nadu until they could find a more permanent driver. Wallace made eight starts in the number 01 Pontiac. His best start was 18th, and his best finish was 19th at Dover in the spring. In the Craftsman Truck Series, Wallace made four starts for two different teams. Two for the number 52 Federated Auto Parts Chevrolet, owned by Ken Schrader. His best start was 9th, and his best finish was 6th, both coming at Daytona in the spring. Then he made two starts in the number 31 Dodge for Bob Brevac. For the best start of 12th, and the best finish of 15th, both coming at Phoenix in the fall. Not much changed for Wallace in 2004. He returned to the number 4, Geico Ford, full-time in the Xfinity Series once again. His best start was 15th at Daytona in the spring, and his best finish was 1st at Daytona in the summer, finding his way back to victory lane in the Xfinity Series for the first time in a decade. The season started off pretty difficult for Wallace, but things improved as the season went on. Overall, he scored 0 poles, 1 win, 1 top 5, and 4 top 10s, finishing 17th in final Xfinity Series point standings. In the NASCAR Cup Series, Wallace made 10 starts for three different teams. Three for the number 50 Dodge team for Don Arnold. His best start was 36th twice at Daytona and Loudoun in the summer. And his best finish was 32nd at Loudoun in the summer. Then he made four starts in the number 09 Dodge for James Finch. His best start was 41st four times at Bristol, Richmond, Loudoun, and Talladega in the fall. His best finish was 7th at Richmond in the fall. Finally, he made his final three starts of the season behind the wheel of the number 4 Chevrolet owned by Morgan McClure Motorsports. His best start was 28th at Homestead in the fall, and his best finish was 29th at Phoenix in the fall. In the Craftsman Truck Series, he made one start at Daytona in the spring. Behind the wheel of the number 52 Federated Auto Parts Chevrolet, starting 26th and finishing 3rd. After several seasons without a full-time ride in the NASCAR Cup Series, Mike Wallace returned in 2005 to drive the number 4 Lucas Oil Chevrolet full-time. His best start was 15th twice at Bristol and Kansas in the fall, and his best finish was 8th at Daytona in the summer. Chris Carrier served as his crew chief for the 2005 Cup Series season. Overall, he scored one top 10 and finished 35th in final Cup Series point standings. In the Xfinity Series, Mike Wallace made 12 starts for five different teams. One at Daytona in the spring, behind the wheel of the number 61 Pontiac, starting 31st and finishing 15th. Three behind the wheel of a number 6 Dodge, owned by Ray Abraham. His best start was 18th and his best finish was 2nd, both coming at Gateway in the summer. One start at Talladega in the spring, behind the wheel of the number 1 Miccosukee Resorts Dodge, for James Finch. Two starts for his brother Rusty Wallace in his number 64 Miller High Life Dodge. His best start was 21st, and his best finish was 10th, both coming at IRP in the summer. Then five starts for Brad Atkins, number 38 Great Clips Dodge. His best start was 28th at California in the fall, and his best finish was 14th at Bristol in the fall. Overall, in 12 starts, he scored zero poles, zero wins, one top five, and three top tens, finishing 40th in final Xfinity Series point standings. Also in the Craftsman Truck Series, Wallace made five starts in the number 12 Toyota for Darrell Walter Motorsports. His best start was 11th at Bristol in the fall, and his best finish was 6th at Richmond in the fall. Overall, in five starts, he scored two top tens. For the 2006 NASCAR season, Mike Wallace ran two-thirds of the Xfinity Series schedule for the number one Miccosukee Resorts Dodge for James Finch. Mark Reno served as his crew chief for the 2006 season. His best start was 8th twice at Daytona in the spring and Gateway in the summer. His best finish was 4th at Kentucky in the summer. Overall, in 23 starts, he scored two top fives and three top tens. As for the Cup Series, Wallace made seven attempts for two different teams,
making one start behind the wheel of the number 49 Dodge for BAM Racing at Richmond in the spring, starting 43rd and finishing 35th. He attempted six races in the number 09 Miccosukee Resorts, Dodges and Fords for James Finch, only qualifying for three events. His best start was 18th at Daytona in the summer, and his best finish was 17th at Talladega in the fall. In the Craftsman Truck Series, Wallace made four starts, two for the Harris Trucking Motorsports number 59 Dodge. His best start was 16th, and his best finish was 31st, both coming at Daytona in the spring. Then two for Billy Bally, who was number 15 Chevrolet. His best start was 15th at Talladega in the fall, and his best finish was 22nd at Homestead in the fall. The following season, in 2007, Wallace was signed to drive the number 7 Geico Chevrolet full-time in the Xfinity Series for James Finch. Wallace really didn't have that great of a season, but was reasonably consistent, allowing him to spend 19 weeks inside the top 10 in the Xfinity Series point standings. His best start was 11th at Phoenix in the fall, and his best finish was 11th at Milwaukee in the summer, ending the season 11th in final Xfinity Series point standings. Now, in the Cup Series, Wallace attempted four races for two different teams. He made one start in the number 88 M&M's Ford at Talladega in the fall for Yates Racing, starting 15th and finishing 19th. Then he attempted three races in the number 09 Miccosukee Resorts Chevrolet for James Finch, only qualifying for the Daytona 500, starting 22nd and finishing 4th. This would end up being his final top 5 and top 10 finish of his career in the Cup Series. As for the Craftsman Truck Series, he made two starts for two different teams, one for David Dollar in his number 46 Direct TB Chevrolet at Daytona in the spring, starting 22nd and finishing 36th following a lap 1 accident. Then, one start for Jermaine Racing in the number 03 Toyota at Talladega in the fall, starting 4th and finishing 17th. The 2008 Xfinity Series season saw Mike Wallace return to the number 7 Geico car, though this season it was owned by Jermaine Racing and became a Toyota. Bruce Cook also served as his crew chief for the 2008 season. His best start was ninth at Nashville in the spring, and his best finish was third at Kentucky in the summer. Wallace's stats improved greatly in 2008, while he spent 31 weeks inside the top 10 in Xfinity Series points. Overall, he scored zero poles, zero wins, one top five, and eight top tens, finishing eighth in final Xfinity Series point standings. Wallace made one Craftsman Truck Series start at Talladega in the fall, behind the wheel of the number nine Geico Toyota starting 10th and finishing 5th. In 2009, Wallace made 20 Xfinity Series attempts, qualifying 17 races. One for Jimmy Means' number 52 Chevrolet at Michigan in the fall, starting 43rd and finishing 34th. 16 for Johnny Davis's number 0 and number 01 Chevrolets. His best start was 10th at Memphis in the fall, and his best finish was 15th three times at California, Memphis, and Homestead in the fall, finishing 35th in final Xfinity Series point standings. Then he made two starts in the NASCAR Cup Series in Larry Gunzelman's number 64 Toyota. His best start was 30th, and his best finish was 39th, both coming at Loudoun in the fall. Also, Wallace made one start at Talladega in the fall in a number 48 Chevrolet for Andy Hillenberg, starting 33rd and finishing 28th. An entirely new decade, the 2010s, and in 2010, Mike Wallace ran the full Xfinity Series schedule behind the wheel of the JD Motorsports number 01 Chevrolet. His best start was 18th in Nashville in the spring, and his best finish was 11th at Las Vegas in the spring, finishing 18th in final Xfinity Series point standings. He did not make any starts in any other series in 2010. For the 2011 Xfinity Series season, Wallace returned to the JD Motorsports No. 01 Chevrolet full-time. His best start was 17th at Kentucky in the summer, and his best finish was 5th at Elkhart Lake in the summer. This season was a little bit of an improvement over the season prior. Overall, scoring zero poles, zero wins, one top five, and two top tens, finishing 13th in final Xfinity Series point standings. In the Craftsman Truck Series, he made one start for Kevin Harvick Incorporated number 33 Chevrolet at Talladega in the fall, starting 6th and finishing 1st, winning his 5th career Craftsman Truck Series event and his final career Craftsman Truck Series start. Next up was the 2012 Xfinity Series season and Mike Wallace was once again behind the wheel of the number 01 Chevrolet for JD Motorsports full-time. His best start was 7th at Daytona in the summer, and his best finish was 7th at Montreal in the fall. Overall, he scored one top 10 and finished 12th in final Xfinity Series point standings. This was the only series 
that he would made a start in throughout the 2012 season. The final full-time season that Mike Wallace would run in any series in NASCAR would come in 2013. When he would run the Xfinity Series schedule for JD Motorsports number 01 Chevrolet for one final season. His best start was 19th at Las Vegas in the spring. And his best finish was 7th at Talladega in the spring. Overall scoring one top 10 and finishing 17th in final Xfinity Series point standings. Mike Wallace made his return to the NASCAR Cup Series in 2014, making six starts for Jay Robinson's number 66 Toyota team. His best start was 23rd at Talladega in the fall, and his best finish was 26th at Martinsville in the fall. Back in the Xfinity Series, Wallace made 11 starts for three different teams. One start for Derek White's number 13 Toyota team at Texas in the spring, starting 32nd and finishing 37th after an electrical issue ended his day at lap 23. Then he made 11 starts for James Whitener's number 28 and number 93 Dodges. His best start was 17th and his best finish was 10th, both coming at Daytona in the summer. This would be his final career top 10 finish in the Xfinity Series. Then he made one start at Mike Harmon's number 74 Dodge at Phoenix in the fall, starting 34th and finishing 35th after an issue with the car's suspension took them out of the race at lap 41. Then in 2015, Wallace made one Xfinity Series start for James Whitener at Daytona in the spring, behind the wheel of a number 26 Toyota, starting 31st and finishing 13th. Wallace made the final three starts of his NASCAR career in the Xfinity Series in 2020, behind the wheel of the number 0 Chevrolet for JD Motorsports. His best start was 14th at the Indianapolis GP in the spring, and his best finish was 24th twice at the Indianapolis Grand Prix in the spring and Elkhart Lake in the summer. So, in 197 NASCAR Cup Series starts, he scored 0 poles, 0 wins, 3 top 5s, and 14 top 10s, with a best points finish of 33rd in 1994. In 497 Xfinity Series starts, he scored 0 poles, 4 wins, 22 top 5s, and 66 top 10s, with a best points finish of 8th in 2008. And in 115 Crash and Truck Series starts, he scored 3 poles, 5 wins, 33 top 5s and 56 top 10s, with a best points finish of 4th in 2000. Thanks for watching everyone, and take care.